Welcome back to my shop. Today's project is going to be a lift for the trains. Previously, we had this long ramp here and we would ramp everything down to the trailer or up into the pickup. And the problem with that is some of this gets a little bit topsy-turvy when you get it on that turning point of the ramp. And so the suspension on the, on the steamer particularly can't comply when you have a like a sharp turning point like that on a ramp so it was a little bit dangerous to try moving that on and off and we found that uh, train mountain had one of these motorcycle lifts where they modified the frame by lengthening it to give additional stability when it's sort of cantilevered out in this low position and then oversized casters that allow us to roll it around so you can see my plan right now is to weld this crossbar to the back of here and then I've got these little extensions that give it full purchase for the casters and I've made sure that they're long enough that when they swivel around they clear the edge of this frame. We can cut these original pins off if we need to. These had just fixed wheels for the original setup. And then on the other end it had brackets for small casters here and on the other side and I just cut this one off and it's still kind of hot and what I plan to do is take this square tubing this is square tube steel we'll grind this all flush and we'll weld it in to this channel and extend out about two feet and then we'll put another crossbar with the same arrangement as those casters on this end that'll widen the the stance of this or the track width for more lateral stability. And it will also give us the ability to roll on uneven surfaces with these oversized casters. You can see this whole assembly is upside down right now. It has like a diamond plate decking on the other side and we can just bolt rail material on top of that. I'll probably use angle steel so I can bolt it and change it as needed. So that is our project for today. I've got this on a little rolling moving dolly so I can move things around. I've got a safety shield here to catch most of the sparks. We'll just clean that up and we'll be ready to roll ski. We're back in the shop. I've made up a pad with swivel casters, one for each side. In the front, I'm going to extend this frame member. We have a weld joint top and bottom. We're gonna come out and do a similar cross member up here, just like the back. And that should give us some lateral support and extend the frame to match the length of this ramp. So if we get a heavier train, maybe like a locomotive with a firebox on this end, it's not gonna tip over. And so that piece will also cross over. I might even add diagonal bracing like this if I feel like it's moving around too much. But we'll see how rigid these tubes are. They're pretty thick. They should do the job. And we're cutting the cross member right now. We're cutting off four inch sections to double up for these blocks here to mount the casters. Just have one more after this one, and then I can clamp it up and get ready to weld. These are the casters I have. You can see the plate is rectangular, and I have these set up to be oriented this direction. I wanna to try to center this because I don't want the head or the nut to interfere with these side things. We want it to be inboard of those, so I'm going to just eyeball this one and then we'll clamp it in place. I'm gonna take a center punch, find the center and make a little dimple. And that is sufficient, if you're careful, to get the drill bit started. Now we can remove the wheel. And you can see we have little dimples. You can take a, a bigger one of these 
and make a deeper dimple if you need to, but I found that that's about all you need. I'm gonna dip the drill in some lubricant here and kind of reach around until I find that dimple and embrace myself. A step drill is nice because it has a lot of different sizes in one area. You can see all the different steps and this is the cutting edge. It has two of those on this particular step drill. I'm gonna chuck this in place. Give you a nice finished hole. And let's put this up here. Get an idea of what this will look like after I throw the fastener down again. We could put washers behind this, but I don't think it's necessary. And it gives you the ability to adjust these a little bit too, because these holes are slotted. Yeah, we have we have enough room for a a nut and a lock washer on the back side. That works just fine. I finished installing the rails. Just use a number ten screw every one foot, and then this is a removable plate, and I wanted to support the rail. So I shimmed up with washers either side of it to make sure that the rail didn't have a big dip in it. And that is the completed table. I even labeled the pedals for down and up. And then this is a safety bar that you can put in the side here at different levels when you're working on something, prevent the thing from falling down if it springs a leak on the hydraulics. I considered making the frame extensions a little shorter than what you see here, because when the platform is fully raised, it exposes them and they could be a potential trip hazard. However, the flip side is that with them shorter, the platform doesn't go in the fully lowered position because a scissor mechanism hits it. And I need to be able to access the lower racks of my roll around rack to unload flat cars. So that's why I chose that particular length of extension. I found that the fixed casters at one end made it very difficult to move laterally and get in final position or to push up against the wall for storage. So I picked up two more swivel casters and that made all the difference. The holes drilled in the rail web on the ends allow me to pin a transition plate in that bridges the gap between this platform and wherever I'm loading. I always appreciate your viewership Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. You'll get the most recent updates on every episode. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more episodes.